Over the past six weeks, as we have explored Come and See with Bishop Stephen, we've been reminded of the primacy of loving God and loving our neighbours as ourselves. The story of the wise and foolish builders might seem an odd topic for Palm Sunday, a day we focus on Jesus' entry into Jerusalem at the start of what we call Holy Week, a week in which so much happens. And though we have just heard in the Gospel story the story of Jesus riding on the donkey and people cutting down palm leaves or throwing their clothes and strewing the road before him, As I reflected in preparing this talk, I began to realise how appropriate the wise and foolish builders are for us as we prepare for the week ahead, a week that is full of challenges for Jesus, his disciples, but also full of challenges for us as we remember and mark the events. Time does not allow for me to recount all that the Gospels place in the coming week, But in addition to a significant amount of teaching, these events include Jesus clearing the temple, his authority being questioned, him predicting his own death and Judas entering into a plot for this with the temple authorities. He institutes the Eucharist at the Last Supper, has a night of isolated and tormented prayer in Gethsemane, is arrested, is abandoned by his close friends, is falsely accused, mocked and beaten, and then is put to death by crucifixion. How much of the detail of this he knew in advance, we don't know. But we do know that he knew he would be killed, because on several occasions he tells his followers this. The events of this week are challenging for us in the relative comfort and safety of Buckinghamshire, But how much more so were they for Jesus? And yet, and yet on that first Palm Sunday, he still rides into Jerusalem. Jesus doesn't shy away. Jesus doesn't take the easy option. Rather, like the wise builder, he recognizes that the right choice is not easy, but requires considerable pain and effort. Imagine for a moment if Jesus had been like the foolish builder and gone for the quick fix requiring little effort for a swift result. Well, for a start, we wouldn't be here for me to ask you that question. In all likelihood, Jesus would have succumbed to the temptations in the wilderness in order to get the whole world to worship him with minimal effort. But that would not have been showing love to God, nor would it have been showing love to us. Instead, Jesus rejected Satan's temptations and today enters Jerusalem, despite the personal cost to him. Some years ago, I had a conversation with a gentleman who really, really wanted to believe in Christ. And he said to me, I envy you Christians, because everything is so easy for you when you have faith. A friend who was with us challenged him in this, saying how every day they faced challenges and decisions that wouldn't arise if they weren't a Christian. Being a Christian isn't always easy, but to them it was worth it, because the joy it also brings them. Loving God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, and loving your neighbour as yourself are not easy. They take considerable effort and at times sacrifice. But they are the foundations on which to build a strong faith that can withstand the test and floods of life. And through his love for God and for us, Jesus was prepared to enter Jerusalem and all that it would entail over the ensuing week. Amen. Got a few notices. Um, First of all, to say, take your um, order of service home with you 
because it tells you everything that's happening through Holy Week. Um, it doesn't give you Easter services. Um, but So Monday to Wednesday, 8 o'clock, there'll be Compline here in church. Um, Monday and Tuesday, it's said. Wednesday, it's sung. And I know that many of you very much enjoy that. It will be on live stream as well. So if coming out um, is, is a bit of a problem, then you're able to watch it um, at home and join in with it prayerfully. On Thursday, there will be our usual 10 o'clock service of Holy Communion. And then at 8 o'clock, it's a service where we do remember um, the Last Supper um, and the washing of feet. So that's the real beginning of um, the, the, the Easter uh, weekend. Good Friday, um, there's a walk of witness from St. Anne's to here, and then at one o'clock, our Good Friday service. There are all sorts of things happening at the Christian Centre and at St. Anne's Hall, if you want to go there in the morning. On Saturday morning, the flowers will be done, um, church will be open all day, and then Easter Day, six o'clock, remember to change your clocks. When I was getting up this morning, I was thinking, it's going to be painful. However, it means it will be dark at 6 o'clock and the sun will rise, so it's perfect. Um, and then we've got 9 o'clock and 10.45 on Easter Day. So a busy week ahead. It's been quite a week this week as well. Um, and I'm actually after a little bit of help. Um, on Tuesday and Wednesday... Uh, all of the year groups of Wendover Junior will be down either Tuesday morning, when, Tuesday afternoon, Wednesday morning, Wednesday afternoon. And we're going to be setting up um, stations around the church. Um, Palm Sunday is going to be down there. Washing of feet, although it's going to be hands, is going to be up here. The Last Supper up at the, the altar. This will turn into Gethsemane. The far corner will be Good Friday. And then right in the middle there, um, we're setting up a tomb to be Easter Day. Um, the children are going to be brought down. And uh, what we need, um, I need somebody who could come on Tuesday morning, um, be here for half past nine and help, or on Tuesday, one person then, one person on Tuesday afternoon, and one person for Wednesday morning, and then I've got two gaps on Wednesday afternoon. If you could help at all, you will be given a script. You will be given what the children are going to be doing. They're going to be moving round, so you'll have to do it seven times. It's going to be, it's going to be good. <laughs> Just talk to me on Wednesday night, or any of us on Wednesday night, um, and see how it's gone. But it's just fantastic that the children will come and we can build up that relationship. If anybody's got any big plot pla pot plants, um, could you talk to me on Nadine? Because we need one or two just to make this look like a garden. Um, but please, try and join in as much of Holy Week as you possibly can. Um, it, it doesn't make sense if you're going from today to Easter with nothing else in between. Um, you might have noticed that Helen's here. Um, Edward is in Wickham Hospital, uh, was taken on Wednesday, and is going to need some heart surgery. So please be praying for Helen, be praying for Edward particularly. Um, it's obviously going to have a bit of an effect on uh, our music, um, although we will, we will rise and, and fill in. But please be aware of that. Perhaps not go and mob Helen, but you know, be praying for them um, in that. Um, if you're on the PCC, you will have received an email from Paul. Could I do a very polite nudge to say, could you look at that? Could you respond to it by the end of tomorrow? So, thank you. Yes, Mr. Sainsbury. <laughs> um, what else is there? Ah, yes, important. You know that we like to put the church into the round for Holy Week. Um, and we'd like to do that again. So if anybody can stay and help put the chairs so they're all facing in, um, that would be absolutely fantastic as well. Final one. If anybody would like to attend Bishop Allen's memorial service, 
It's on Saturday the 13th of April. It's at Holy All Saints um, High Wycombe um, at 11.30. And you can register um, for that. There is a link on the update if you would like to do that. Right, I'm going to stop there. Thank you.